So I'm merciful. Yes, sir. Yes. Do you have any doubt in this? No, in the sir. Previous, from the previous no, class, no, that's good. No, sir. Okay. Uh, so, uh, have we practiced question? Okay, Which question? Not before. Uh, not so many. We did questions. some questions. Okay. So I, okay. Only do one to two questions, right? Yeah, sir. Because after that, we will start new chapter in the next class. Okay, okay, okay. So basically, we are going to start a new topic of this chapter that is uh, as your topic mix. So basically, two uh, topics from this chapter left. And that is the first one is as your topic mixture, as your top mixture. Write a topic. As your topic. Sir. Yes. Sir, actually, like. 23rd, I have my chemistry test. I told you, right? Yes, yes. 23rd June, right? Yes, sir. So will we will we be able to complete the second chapter also? No, full second chapter. Uh, do, uh, I will try to take extra classes because uh, uh, you know that. Uh, let me uh, tell you how many class we will have um, till then. Um, we will have uh, another class that is on 15th. And then uh, 20 and 22. Wait a minute, wait a minute, first, please. Yes, sir. Okay, Harsh. So we will have only three classes till that. And I okay. think <clears throat> today we are going to complete this chapter. And in three classes, it, uh, it won't be possible to complete that chapter because it is quite a big chapter also. Yes, sir. Okay, so. Uh, sir, is this, have... are this topic important? As your topic, yes, yes. It is important and uh, don't worry uh, no sir because in the second chapter is like difficult okay. for me so okay. i'm just asking we will have extra second chapter is uh, which the solution no no uh, this uh i'll arrange the solution sir Oh, don't worry about that. <clears throat> in extra class, if you I like think, in school, uh, also on which day school? you are free? Yeah. I am free, sir. One more, sir. sir. I am free on Friday, this Friday, which is 2017th, Saturday. Uh, and then uh, okay, tell me I'm the day, tell me the day, please. Tell me, sir. I'm day. free, sir. I'm free on 17th. 17th and after this 18th sir 18th or uh, uh, and then uh, and then maybe 19th sir because 22 i have exams so 19th i have uh, sorry 22 i have physics so maybe okay i'm free on 19th okay so three classes we can arrange time yeah time what time it, is, it should be sir this time only you can keep it okay 7 30 p.m Indian day. Yes, sir. Okay. So this three classes and this three. Okay, 15, 16, 17. Okay, okay. I'll see about it. And uh, after uh, yes. 
sir because in school also like uh, we did the chapter but we uh, couldn't understand much so it's oh, confusing don't worry about that we if you are going to uh, we are going to start on next uh, in next classes and definitely we will cover whole syllabus with all the questions from ncert and <clears throat> all okay Okay, now see sure. azeotropic mixture what is azeotropic mixture first point from my azeotropic mixture it should be binary solution it should be binary solution. binary solution binary solution that means two components only solute plus solvent are you getting my point only yes, two sir. components should be there if it is binary uh, by, uh, if it is azeotropic mixture next point which is very important the composition should be fixed composition fixed composition it should it should not be like this if you are going to mix in any composition or in any ratio uh, it yes, will sir. be azeotropic yes. mixture for a, for azeotropic mixture the composition should be fixed okay yes sir next point which is very important constant boiling point constant boiling boiling point constant uh, boiling point it should be constant boiling point due to which after mixing they have constant boiling point uh, which due to which fractional fractional distillation is not possible fractional distillation is not possible so after so, mixing it both will have equal or constant boiling point and if you are going to fractional distillation do you know you heat the yes sir i read it but it, i'm just yeah, yeah yes yes i was going to ask you like i forgot what is fractional distillation is some sort of separation right? distillation say uh, what you just uh, said separation right from some substance yes yes see fractional distillation is what if you have a, a mixture and a mixture is here and they are have uh, they having the mixture having different boiling point and if you are going to heat it and uh, suppose one has h2o and another has c2h5oh c2h5oh that means uh, uh, alcohol we know that alcohol is less uh, alcohol has less boiling point so and here is some condensation you will and if you are going to uh, this has 100 degree centigrade and this has less than 100 degree centigrade less than 100 degree centigrade and if you are going to heat on less than 100 degree centigrade the alcohol will evaporate will be converted into vapor yes or no yes sir and it will go in this flask and you are going to uh, uh, pour, uh, cool it with the help of condenser and then when you cool it alcohol will uh, will uh, alcohol all alcohol will be converted into vapor and come in come into this flask now all alcohols are here and water are here, uh, are here. so basically this is fractional distillation when there are different boiling points then we can separate it by the help of fractional distillation is that clear yes sir but azeotropic mixture does not support or you can call uh, for azeotropic mixture fractional distillation is not possible because, because of constant boiling point constant boiling point are you getting my point yes sir see c2h5oh plus h2o is azeotropic mixture when it is 95% weight by weight that means alcohol ethanol is 95% weight by weight in alcohol in water is water. azeotropic mixture in azeotropic mixture it is not necessary that if you are going to add some ethanol in water and it will form azeotropic mixture what i uh, wrote here is uh, is it very important it should have fixed position so if these three points is satisfied by a mixture or a solution that forms azeotropic mixture only okay, okay? if any one of the point is violated then it won't form azeotropic mixture is that clear yes sir no please write it and then we will go for next
Agiotrops. Agiotrops here is very important. It is divided into two parts. The first one is minimum boiling point. Minimum boiling point. And the second one is maximum boiling point. It is also important to note that minimum boiling point is shown by positive deviation that means non-ideal solution with positive deviation and maximum boiling point is uh, shown by negative deviation non-ideal solution with negative deviation are you clear with the uh, mean um, positive deviation and negative deviation yes sir so see how it uh, it is very easy to understand that uh, azeotropic mixture positive deviation see in positive deviation, you have seen that this was the graph. Leave it. This is the graph. I'm going to draw it. This is the graph like this. In positive deviation, it was clear from the graph that it forms with more vapor pressure. Are you getting my point? It forms more yes, vapor sir. pressure or not? Yes, and sir. If something or any substance having more vapor pressure, having more vapor pressure, that means lower boiling point. Are you getting my point? If vapor pressure is more, then, uh, then that means boiling point is lower. lesser. Yes, sir. In the same way, if negative deviation, you can see if you are going to plot a negative deviation. So, vapor deviation pressure will be less. Graph, so, if, will be uh, less. you can see vapor pressure will be lesser. And if vapor yes. pressure will be lesser, boiling point will be maximum more. higher. Yes. So, that's yes. why it is written as your props are of two types, having minimum boiling point and minimum boiling point is shown by Positive deviation, positive deviation. maximum boiling point and maximum boiling point is shown by negative, negative deviation. deviation. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, uh, now see, I'm going to plot a graph which is very important. Here is, this is mole fraction of ethanol and this is mole fraction of H2. Now you know that it will be like this, but for positive deviation, you know that this will be like this. Just don't write it now. And yes. you also know that this negative deviation, negative for negative deviation, take an example of HNO3 in water. In water. And it forms a geotropic mixture when HNO3 is 68% weight by weight. I told you the composition should be fixed. Are you my sir, fixed, yes, sir. Now, since it is negative deviation, the it will be like this. less vapor. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. So this is the maximum point you can see. It is uh, it is maximum point vapor pressure. This will have the maximum point, and this will have the lowest point, the uh, the point which is very like this. Now see yes. another graph will be plotted against it. So this is basically uh, vapor pressure composition. Vapor pressure versus composition. It's true. <clears throat> Again, if you are going to uh, plot a graph between vapor pressure and temperature, the graph will be like for this. Uh, I'm going to plot it. Please write the first, uh, uh, first write it, and then I'm going to plot another graph. Yes.
Are you done? Sir, uh, one or seven. Okay, take your time. Done, sir. Uh, very good. Uh, so this is about azeotropic mixture. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now we are going to start Van Hoff factor. Second topic, sir. Yes, Van Hoff factor. So, so uh, can we? Van Hoff. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Speak up. So can we start the second chapter in this class? We uh, we will start after this. Uh, this is the last topic, basically. Yes, sir. sir. After this, one. To, after this. Okay. Yes, we have uh, at least one hour more, so don't worry yeah. about it. Okay. See what is went uh, in went of factor. Uh, I'm going to uh, introduce an, uh, another term that is abnormal. Molar mass, abnormal molar mass. What like is abnormal molar mass? Uh, like what is mass? A molar mass is not normal. Yeah, yeah. So write with, with me. Uh, when a non-volatile solute, when a non-volatile solute added. To solvent and it undergo association or dissociation. Do you know what it is? If, Sir, association uh, addition. Uh, either it will break down or yeah. addition or, or dissociation. Separate. Yeah, yeah, like it's separate. Uh, yeah, dissociation. That means yes. uh, breakdown. Yes. Dissociation. Yes. Then. Then the molar mass of non-volatile, then the molar mass of non-volatile solute as calculated as calculated from Colligative property will be different will be different from its normal molar mass. Normal molar mass. This is known as abnormal molar mass. This is known as abnormal molar mass. It is very easy to understand what I want to explain. Please write it and let me know. After that, I will explain. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Done, sir. Very good. So, see what happens when a non volatile solute is added to a solvent, it breaks down either it breaks down, uh, that means dissociation takes place, or either it associates, that means addition of molecules takes place. 
so whenever addition uh, association or dissociation takes place its molar mass will change how it will change i will show you and that molar mass is called abnormal molar cl is here and nacl has a uh, molar mass of 58.5 g and after dissociation that means you are going to uh, keep it in water solvent as a solvent it will be converted into na plus plus cl minus either you will receive this you will uh, take this or either you will take this so before dissociation before adding into the solvent if you are going to take one mole of uh, one mole of that thing it will be 58.5 g but after adding in the solvent it will be dissociated na plus will be separate from cl minus okay so if you are going to take one mole of anything like na plus or cl minus either it will be 23 g or it will be 35.5 g so it is important to know that note that initially it was 58.5 g that was fixed but after dissociation either you can take one mole of na plus or cl minus so you can see the mass is changed or not yes sir so if the mass is changed that means uh this is different from the colligative properties that's why it is abnormal molar mass and now see if you are going to uh, take ch3coh and if you are going to take two moles and uh, uh, after uh, after dipping it into the solvent it forms one mole how does it forms one mole so dissociation was, uh, here it is dissociation what does dissociation means it will be uh, separation uh, separated or divided into more one mole of air it will become yes. two moles one mole of this and one mole of this and association yes, is two mole will be converted into one mole one mole now see there will be hydrogen bonding between this hydrogen with the help of hydrogen bonding it will form only one mole this is association this is association yes sir so see very is it's very easy if you are going to take uh, two mole it will have more ma uh, molar mass and uh, it is two mole here and it is one mole here so you can see the if mole changes mass is also change that's why it is called abnormal molar mass is that clear yes sir is that degree of dissociation degree of dissociation is degree of dissociation is alpha it is denoted by an alpha and alpha, alpha is basically concentration alpha is basically concentration of non volatile solute gets non volatile solutes gets associated or dissociated upon in initial initial concentration of solute in solution so basically basically ac <coughs> alpha has a value concentration of non volatile solute gets associated or dissociated which gets associated or dissociated uh, dissociated upon initial concentration of solute in solution that is uh, that is the definition of alpha that is uh, this degree of dissociation that means you can see here two moles divided by one moles is basically alpha you can call it sir so like from the above example it will be 58.5 divided by 40 uh, 23 plus no no 45. we are talking about uh, concentration that is you only talk about uh, uh, mass but we are talking about concentration not mole or not mass concentration that means molarity yes okay yes we are talking about molarity hmm. 
Are you done with this? So, I'm running a formula. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hmm. Done, sir. Mm, ready. See, I'm going to define. Went of factor now. Went of factor i is basically it is defined as ratio of number of solute particles associated. or dissociated and number of solute particles before association or dissociation. Association or dissociation. So basically what it is, Wendell factor I is equal to before the association, see, number of solute particles, number of solute particles associated or dissociated Number solute particles. You can write uh, it is defined as ratio of number of solute particles after dissociation or association. Yes, after sir. dissociation or uh, association particles before association or dissociation. You can see if there was NaCl, see first of all Ca and then you will write NaCl. It will be converted into Na plus Cl minus. Yes, so if sir. you are going to if you are going to calculate I, I will be after dissociation, it is one mole, one mole, two mole divided by before dissociation, it is only one mole. So I is 
has a value which is 2 upon 1. Again, if you are going to see 2 moles of CS3, sorry, 2 moles of CS3, C double OH, or uh, I, after, after it will associate itself, so it will be CS3, C double bond O, OH. And again, OH and again double bond O and it will be CS3. Now you can see there will be hydrogen bonding and there will be hydrogen bonding. It becomes one molecule. So I is equal to after dissociation, uh, it is one molecule and before association, it is two molecules. So always remember for dissociation, for dissociation, dissociation that means one is becoming two breakdown dissociation in dissociation case i will always be greater than one because after dissociation it will be more than the previous moles but after association that means two will convert into one three will convert into one it will less than one i will have a value lesser than one are you getting my point yes sir so please write it Sir, can you scroll it up? A scroll uh, up or down? Sir, up. Sir, the definition. Okay. Definition. Okay, please write it. This definition? Sir, the Van Top oh, factor wait, definition. Sir. Wait, wait, wait. This definition, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. yeah. yeah. So the yes yes no so the screen changed the screen changed yeah uh, yes sir before the screen is I think you scrolled it no no it's good you want the definition of Van't Hoff factor this is the Van't Hoff factor yes sir this is Are it, this is the definition of Van't Hoff factor yes sir it is the definition. So what do you want? Nothing, nothing, sir. I, uh, the screen changed in the middle. Someone is asking. Okay. Okay, let me know. Are you done with this? So one minute. So done, sir. Very good. Now you, uh, I'm going to give some questions uh, to calculate uh, I only. That is very easy. Calculate the value of I. MgCl2. Can you convert it, uh, dissociate it? You yes, sir. Mg plus Mg Cl2. Plus two. 2Cl minus 2Cl minus LCL3. You can also dissociate it as. Can you dissociate it? L plus 3 plus CL3. CL3, 3Cl minus. Yes, sir. 3Cl. L2SO4 whole thrice. It will be 2Al plus 3. And a three SO four minus two. Please do this question. I'll be back from Austin.
<clears throat> are you done with the first one what is the, the value of i is it, is it 2 by 1 not 2 by 1 what is the number of moles after dissociation one mole of this two mole of this how many moles three moles total oh, three, after yes, dissociation three and before dissociation it is only one, one mole one one yes three by one so three by one or three Sir, so the... second one also be three by one i got three by one not three by one how many moles of this one mole how many one. moles of this three three moles now you have to balance yeah, okay, it yeah, yeah. Four, four. so total four four by one or four please do the remaining Sir, yes. Sir, five by one for the third one. Yes, it will be two moles of this, three moles of this. It will be five divided by one. I is equal to five by one. Okay. Done, sir. Very good. So this is how we are going to calculate. And always remember for dissociation, since it is all the example of dissociation, I will be greater than uh, greater than one. But for association, it will be less than one. I already uh, show you. Now, another definition of I or another formula for I uh, we got is I can also be written as I is equal to normal molar mass, whatever is the normal molar mass upon abnormal molar mass upon abnormal molar mass molar mass how we are going to understand it just see the example then you yes. will write only see what we have is <clears throat> ch3cwh ch3cwh cwh we are going to take two moles and you know that it will be associated that means two moles will be converted into one mole Two moles will be converted into one, one moles, mole. and it will be like this. Yes, sir. Now see, see if you are going to take the molar mass of this, since it is one mole, uh, what is the molar mass of this? Sixty gram. Please calculate the molar mass of CH three C double O H. It will be sixty gram. And if you are okay. going to calculate, it will be one twenty gram. It will be one twenty. One twenty. Before applying, before applying this formula, apply the previous formula. I is equal to number of mo, uh, number of moles of solute after, after dissociation. After dissociation or association upon yes. number of moles of solute before, before association. It is association. Association. So number of moles after association, it is one mole, and yes, before sir. dissociation, it is. Uh, association two. it is two moles i is equal to 1 by 2 in the same way if you are going to take normal molar mass is 60 gram but after association it becomes 120 gram so this this is also a formula for i that is normal molar mass upon abnormal molar mass please write okay okay sir Are you done with this? 
Seven numbers are in the example of CS3. Done, sir. Yes, sir. Done. Very good. Now, see, we have a question on this. Normal molar mass of benzene. Benzoic acid, non benzene. Normal molar mass of benzoic acid is 122 gram per mole yes sir and abnormal molar mass of benzoic acid is 244 gram per yes sir calculate i okay so i'm gonna calculate okay Don't be in hurry for the next chapter, which is haloalkanes and halorins. We will definitely cover that chapter. But hmm, first of all, make sure you are going to learn everything from this chapter. And then we will move to that chapter. Don't worry about that because uh, if we, we are getting two uh, total five classes before the chapter, before your exam, we will cover each and everything from that. It is yes, not sir. that much, but we will start today some of it. Are you done with this? Sir, somehow I'm getting one by one. One by one? How yeah, like see, I, 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 I divided 122 by 2, and I got 61. 244. Uh, no, no, 122, sir. Uh, normal, right? Yes. What is the formula of I? I is equal to normal molar Sir, mass. normal molar mass by uh, abnormal molar mass. Abnormal molar mass. Abnormal molar yeah. mass. Normal so molar mass is 144. And yeah. 244? 244, yeah. So it will be divided by two times. So half 22 to the 44, 100 to the 200. So it will be 244. Isn't it? Yes, sir, yes. Are you done with this? Yes, sir. Yes. There are some calculations there. Okay. Sir, actually, I'm not in a like, hurry to finish the second chapter, but like, ma'am told it is important from this. Because there are two chapters. Yeah, yeah it is important. Every chapter can be good. Hmm. Are you, yeah, yeah, it is important. Every chapter can be done with this. But you have to yes, score sir. a decent marks, like uh, full out of full. Okay. Are you done with this? Yes, sir. Yes, done. Okay. Uh, see, so, another definition yeah. for I. I is basically another definition for I is equal to observe 
upon calculated observed upon calculated so observed observed is equal to i went of factor into calculated and all the qualitative uh, qualitative formula will be modified now now we know that observed is observed is uh, delta t b and calculated will be i into kb into m there will be uh, there is another formula delta tf just multiplied it i into kf into m this is calculated if you are going to in, uh, multiply by i it will be perfect what is, uh, the question we have solved uh, delta tb is equal to i into m, uh, i into uh, kb uh, sorry kb into m or kf into m that is already uh, that has already i is equal to 1 that's why there is no problem in that P not a minus P a upon P not a will be equal to I into Z a b mole fraction of non volatile solid. Another formula pi is equal to I into m into R. These all formula are now modified. So first of all, we have to calculate the value of I. Depending upon the given normal mass, molar abnormal, uh, uh, normal mass or abnormal mass, molar mass, or depending upon the situation, is it association or dissociation? So please write it and let me know if you are done with this. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, yes. In uh, the third equation, P dot A is equal to P A. Is that P A? Yes, P A. P not A minus P A upon P not A is equal to I into Z A B. Okay, sir. So done, sir. All are done. Yes. Very good. Now there are some questions from Nate on this. The Mantoff factor. I for a dilute equal solution of the strong electrolyte barium hydroxide. I'm going to give you option A is zero, B is one, C is two, D is three. Can you do this? Sir, I'm trying, sir. Okay. 
please do try and then we are going to start your new chapter yes sir uh, but you have to do practice on your own or the assignment have you solved all the assignment sir i was i was solving like i gave it as a summary mm. no bhai bro yaar ye kuch bhi mushkil hai then <laughs> sir yes second so solve this sir yes barium hydroxide do you know the formula of barium hydroxide yes or no p a s s b a Sin, uh, uh, from which group barium is the group of barium can you tell me the group of barium from group which number. elements group group barium barium is it sec no it's not sec see beta mange kanya sundar bap raji this is barium from second group it's second right yes from second group it second is group. now see yeah. since beryllium has plus 2 charge magnesium plus 2 so it will plus also two have charge. barium see, plus, two charge. plus 2 charge so oh will be whole twice because it has minus one charge oh minus are you getting my point yes sir now if ba oh whole twice is going to dissociate it will be converted into ba plus 2 Plus two OH minus. Now, can you solve the value of I? Yes, sir. Put the put in the formula. Right? Yes. Yeah. I is equal to. So is it two uh, by one? Not so three by one. Three by one. Three by one. Three by one. Dissociation. So three two moles of this, one mole of. Yes, this, a three, three by, by one, right? One. Yes, it is three by one. Is this clear? Yes, sir. so we are going to start a new chapter the introduction will take place today only uh, hello alkenes and hello arenes but first of all we are going to the uh, name the chapter and discuss the name of the chapter hello alkenes and hello arenes yes sir okay so hello that is stand for x halogen yes you know that this halo is stand for x and x is uh, for halogen halogen that is fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine yes or no yes this is it only and alkane you already know that hydrocarbon single carbon carbon single bond and if you are going to see uh, basically alkyl group uh, alkyl and halo hal arene that Stand for hello. Stand for X and R uh, for generally uh, benzene. So this is the definition of the chapter: hello alkene and hello arene. First of all, we are going to classify it. 
सो क्लासिफिकेशन क्लासिफिकेशन द फर्स्ट क्लासिफिकेशन इज बेस्ड ऑन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ नंबर ऑफ हेलोजन एट नंबर ऑफ हेलोजन एट now see on the basis of number of halogen atom when we talk about it if halogen number is 1 it will be mono halo alkane okay so see c2h5x now ch2x and ch2x x stand for halogen now ch2x chx and ch2x these are all known as sin uh, see since one halogen is present so it will be mono halo alkane since two present so it will be di halo alkane since three present tri halo alkane are you getting yes, my sir. point so yes, these sir. are all the <coughs> classification of halo alkane please write it and let me yes sir Answer. Very good. Now see, this is the classification of haloalkane, not haloarene. So how we are going to classify on this base haloarene? So say, ah, uh, there is a benzene type structure that is arene, and if it is one X, it will be haloarene. If there is two halogen. X and X, it will be as uh, sorry, it will be mono haloarene. Mono and, uh, di di haloarene. Three three halogens are there. Try haloarene. Very good. If there is three, try haloarene. Okay. Please write it. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Answer. Now see, ah, uh, basically the second classify classification is 
the second classification is based on compounds containing sp3 carbon x that means the carbon with which halogen is attached or connected it should be sp3 this is the so, class base of the classification bond and x you already know that it should be fluorine it can be fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine these all are basically x are you getting my point yes, now sir. see so basically first of all in this matter i'm going to introduce degree of carbon degree of carbon no degree of carbon do you know how to calculate degree of carbon sir it's degree like secondary tertiary secondary right Uh, primary tertiary secondary see how uh, how we are going to calculate degree of carbon so you need to calculate degree of any carbon that is specified just uh, to to find in order to find the degree of that specified carbon just see how many carbons directly attached with that carbon primary. all i want to say is that all i want to say is that just see like this it is uh, like this it is what is the degree of the carbon on the left hand side degree of carbon c if i am going to tertiary. calculate degree of carbon not tertiary c uh, if you are going to find degree of this carbon just see how many carbons directly attached with this carbon how many carbons directly attached with this carbon only one no. carbon directly attached what yes. i want to say if you are going to find the degree yeah, one is carbon, directly attached yeah. directly so it will be one degree now what is the degree of this carbon so it two. is directly attached with this and the previous one so it will be two degree two. are you getting my point yes sir now what is the degree of this carbon tell me it's a two two degree because it is attached with this and this now yeah. tell me the degree of this carbon see it so carefully and tell me not two, two. only see I see. Yeah, three, three, three. It is directly attached with one, two, three. So it will have three degree. And how? What is the degree of this carbon directly attached with one. how many carbons? So it will one. be one degree. So here is how we are going to calculate degree of carbon. So what is the degree of carbon? Uh, to how the many number, number of, of carbon? carbon it is it attached directly attached. Directly, to. directly attached or directly connected. Now yes. this is not a, that much important in this chapter. Important is degree of halogen. Degree of Halogen. halogen. So see how we are going to calculate degree of halogen. So uh, basically, degree of halogen is defined as degree of uh, the uh, basically degree of halogen is equal to the degree of carbon, degree of carbon to which this halogen is attached. to which this halogen is attached are you getting my point if you need to calculate the degree of halogen just see what is the degree of the carbon to which this halogen is attached if i am going to show you just see it ch if this is fluorine and this is uh, ch3 and this is uh, bromine and uh, this is ch2 and this is uh, f now see what is the degree of halogen of this what is the degree of fluorine to calculate degree of fluorine just see what is the, the degree, degree of carbon. carbon what is the degree of carbon of this the carbon two. so it is 2 degree halide are you getting my point okay so the uh, what is the degree of, of this bromine degree. yes to, uh, the carbon to which halogen is attached will be equal to the degree of Uh, hello. hello are you getting yes. my point yes sir for bromine also it is 2 sir no 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 it's 3 3 3 okay yes, 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 yes. what is the degree of fluorine fluorine is 1 1 yeah. so this is how we are going to calculate degree of halogen halogen so first of all it should be sp3 uh, just write it and then i will classify allylic alkyl and allylic
Answer. Very good. So now see, we are going to classify on the basis of sp3 hybridized carbon to which X is uh, connected. So the first is alkyl halides. Alkyl halides or haloalkenes. Alkyl halides or halo alkenes. Now see if this is X and this is H and this is H and this is R. So basically, R is alkyl group. Do you uh, do you know R is alkyl group? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So basically, alkyl group is uh, you can say methyl, ethyl, propyl, anything it will be. Okay. Yes, sir. So you can see since yes, it is methyl or R, that means uh, carbon compound. This will be one degree that means one degree is also known as primary and then x r dash yes, r double dash and h so it will be two degree so it will be secondary tertiary and then x, oh, sorry, secondary. r dash r double dash r that means represents carbon r dash methyl ethyl propyl double so bond. it is three degree so it is not double bond what you said double bond r is for carbon sure, compound ethyl ethyl hers am i audible wait a minute hers am i audible hers yes, sir, now you're audible, sir. okay yes, sir. so here it is that uh, r is a stand for alkyl group methyl ethyl propyl that means carbon compound this is tertiary yes sir so Three. basically Alkyl yeah, halides yeah, or yeah, halo yeah, alkenes. Yeah. This is primary, secondary, tertiary. Please write yes, it. Sir. This is the first classification of sp3 carbon. Are you done? Yes, sir. Done. Okay. Now the next classification comes, and it uh, its name is allylic. Allylic halides. See what is the difference. See here is CH two double bond CH, and then CH two X. 
so see whenever a double bond and then a single bonded carbon which is sp3 hybridized carbon and with this hybrid sp3 hybridized carbon and halogen a uh, halogen is attached this is called allylic halides are you getting my point if there is double bond yes. and then a singly bonded carbon which is sp3 hybridized and there is x attached with this sp3 hybridized carbon both are same same are called allylic halides allylic also halides. you can see allylic halides is this allylic halide yes or no so you can see this is double bond and this double bond is yes. with adjacent to this carbon it is sp3 and with this sp3 carbon hybridized. hybridized carbon x is attached that's why it is also allylic halide please write this <clears throat> yes, are you done with this yes sir okay now the third classification based on this sp3 hybridized carbon benzylic is benzylic benzylic halides now you see what is benzylic halides so basically there will be benzene ylic that means you can see this is doubly bonded and then single bond and this carbon should be sp3 hybridized sp3 hybridized and with this yes, x is x is connected this is benzylic halide also we can write like this uh, this is double bond and you can see this is cx uh, it can be anything r or r s please write Sir, can you define it again? See, benzylic. It's all the part of sp3 carbon hybridized. This okay. So, what is common in this? This double bond. After this double bond, there is a single bond carbon, and this carbon should be sp3 hybridized, and it will be sp3 hybridized uh, because it's making single bond. And with this carbon, X is connected. In the same way, this is a double bond, and then a, a single bond with carbon. and then with this carbon x is connected okay is a screen shared uh no sir it is showing okay yeah yeah now it's shared okay and the next classification in nomenclature please read about it very important i'm going to tell you what you need to do in the for the next class just one minute sir take your time no problem at all done sir done 